In this video, we will bypass the motherboard check of the IN2014 installer and also remove the 30 second delay when it detects a non megatouch hard drive and just set that as two seconds instead. So let's go ahead and work on getting past those motherboard checks. We'll start up Ghidra, Ghidra run, and we're going to go ahead and load in the libinstaller.so file. Now I've already actually done a little bit of work on this. So I marked up some things, but it won't really matter. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look for the, the string, the error string that we got, which is something like motherboard not detected. I'm just gonna type in the word motherboard. Okay, then we got some references. Click on one of those, find the references to it. And let's click on that. And we see it, the reference is no boot. So we'll click on that. And I'm going to change my, add my a function call tree. So I can easily look back and forth at things or what calls things and what's what gets called from what. There we go. So let's click on no boot and the reference to no boot is from setup. And let's look at, let's look at the code for setup. There it is. The compiler window. And we see the first thing we have here is we have some type of check. And then if the error is 202, then it says invalid motherboard detector. So this looks like this is the, the, the thing that actually displays invalid motherboard, but what's the thing that actually tells us whether it's a valid motherboard? Looks like it's gonna be this function. And yeah, and this is where I marked up some of the, the comments already. So let's go ahead and this is the, the function that clearly checks for the motherboard. Let's go ahead and rename it to motherboard check or whatever. I think I, I usually start my names out with a B underscore motherboard check. And that it's the bees, so you, I know that I put that note in there. Okay, so that's a motherboard check, and now we got to figure out how to bypass it. Well, it's this um, the motherboard check looks like it returns a zero if it is invalid. So, and I'm just gonna put that return value, on board check return value. And then again, there's this error number that's set that it's gonna check if um, it is. So let's look at the, the motherboard check and looks like it returns one if it finds a valid motherboard, otherwise it returns zero. And we wanna go ahead and just make it return one. So um, we have to actually look, at the make sure the code doesn't have any side effects. It doesn't seem to have any side effects. So we can just edit this code. We can just change the code from doing any checks to just returning one. And that's what we're gonna do. So to patch this, we need to find the first couple bytes. And we're just gonna search through the binary for those bytes and, and patch them. So I'm just gonna write down a bunch of the bytes here. Uh, five five eight nine e five so forth and so on. Um, we could also take note of the last couple bytes of the address and uh, find it that way. Um, but it's easier for me just to actually search. It might not be easier, but that's what I do. So let's make a copy of that file, that lib installer. Copy it out from that file system where we extracted it and just copy to our desktop. Call it the same thing, libinstaller.so. And then we'll run Bless, which is a hex editor. And it's free. It's on you. You can download it with app get on Ubuntu. Okay. And we're going to search for that, that first few bytes that I mentioned. And we'll make sure there's only one um, place it's found. And then I check the, the offset and make sure it starts at the right offset, 7010. So 
Good. Now let's just um, patch us. Bring up Google and search for this online assembler slash disassembler. And the one you want is the one that says diffuse.ca. That's the website. And just put the code in. We want to do, maybe we just have to, uh, the first thing we have to do is set e, um, EAX to one and then return. That's all we have to do. We have to overwrite the code. So I'm going to do this with XOR EAX, EAX, which sets it to zero, EAX to zero, INC EAX, which then adds one and then return. That's only four bytes long. I'm sorry, one, two, three, four. Yeah, it's four bytes long. And um, then we just put those bytes, 31C040C3 zero, zero, at the beginning of the code, overwriting them, not shifting them, just literally overwriting those first four bytes. Then let's save it. Now let's copy the modified installer back to where it needs to be in the unextracted files from the ISO. Now I'll use a script that I wrote that just basically rebuilds it and then makes a new ISO from it. It's the command I showed you before, I just put it into a script. So I'm just gonna call rebuild installer and then give it a file name. That's a, script, that's a script, it's called Rebuild Installer. Make sure I run the script as root. So we're gonna verify the file got created by looking in the directory where it's supposed to, where that script creates the things. And there it is, the installer mbpatch.iso. Now I'm going to copy it up to my actual virtual machine on my Windows host. And I just put the ISO on the desktop, but now we need to open the VM and actually change the CD to boot from that new ISO. So let's go do, ahead and do that. Change the CD to the new one on the desktop. Okay. Now let's boot it up. And now it looks like it passed the motherboard check. Now that was kind of annoying since it took quite a while after it gave us the message that the hard drive was invalid. So let's go ahead and get rid of that delay. So I'm searching for this function called sleep because that's generally how things wait is by sleeping. And you can see here I have a sleep for quite a bit of time. So like 30 seconds right after there's a non-supported hard drive detected. And uh, so we're just gonna patch that out and turn that to like two seconds. So again, we have to find out where this code is. So I'm just gonna write down a bunch of bytes and look at the also the offset. Um, and then we're going to just patch that out. So we're just gonna turn that one E into a zero when we find that one E in here which is going to be at this line. It's going to be in this line that ends in 8817. So let's go ahead and do the same thing we did. We're going to hex edit it with uh, plus. And put those bytes in. And now let's change that one E to a zero two to change the timeout from 30 seconds to um, two seconds. Then we'll save it and do that whole rebuild installer script again, create a new ISO, copy it to our virtual machine and reboot.
and here. We'll see. It should be pretty fast now. There it goes.